traumatisert. Jeg kjenner folk som daglig lever med det som kalles problematisk sorg og kraftig depresjon som følger av de flotte menneskene som de var så glad i og som har gått bort. Dette er egentlig, vi snakker om overdoser og tall og statistikk, så overskygger litt det at dette var enkeltindivider, det var mennesker som en rekke folk var veldig glad i, hver dag var bekymret for, alltid håpte på at det skulle gå bra, og som betydde fryktelig mye for dem, og så ble de revet vekk. Aril har selv vært en av de vi prater om, rusmissbruker. Og det er for å snakke om en del av mange folk. Has been a drug abuser, <laughs> not drug addict, not drug user, a drug abuser. My name is Aril Knutsen, and I'm the leader of the Association for Humane Drug Policy in Norway, and that's a drug user organization. I've been using illegal drugs, still illegal drugs, since uh, the 80s, when I was 15, 16 years old. And until 1992, I was in what they call institutional drug treatment. I have been to the drug uh, treatment again in 2014 to 15 and in 2017. We had open drug scenes in Oslo and in many other cities. And since the 80s, with the Just Say No area, Reagan, we started criminalizing much more, putting more and more people to jail, up to lifetime in prison for using and possess, possessing drugs. And uh, then we started to have very many drug overdoses. And Norway is, has for a long time been one of the three countries in Europe with the most overdoses. And it was when the HIV epidemic started in the 80s that we started to turn around and look to Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands and started very, very careful with some harm reduction efforts. This comes in different colors, so we, we don't uh, share needles. And this is naloxone. This is the antidote for heroin and other morphine medication. Yes, we're giving up and training people to use this nasal spray or antidote. So if you come and find a person that has had a heroin overdose, you can save the, their lives in seconds. You can't come to a, a humane, a scientific uh, based drug policy without speaking to those who use drugs. It's, uh, we know what it's about, we know what's, uh, what are the good things to do to create a better society for us and for you who lives with us. In 1996 we got the first drug user organization that was a part of uh, the temperance movement, the drug abusers organization. And that was all until um, the harm reduction movement came. So this is ascorbic acid. Uh, most of the heroin in Norway is made for smoking. So you have to put it in water and boil it up with some acid to make it injectable. And with, when we don't hand out ascorbic acid, they use citric acid, which is not much, much stronger and creates more harm. So this is harm reduction, pain reduction, and it's white powders in these little bags and it's called acid. So the police don't like very much when you go out with this, hey, you want some acid? It sounds like we're doing something criminal, but this is very important. A lot of the um, harm reduction efforts is because of uh, the signals coming from the drug users and what we needed. But there was an organization representing them opposing harm reduction. So we needed more uh, drug user organizations. So we started up in 2006 and, uh, in, and then now we are five drug user organizations. Working for drug users' rights, promoting harm reduction like needle exchange, uh, drug consumption room, uh, heroin prescription and also the um, substitution program. And we're having a big switch campaign in Norway to inspire injecting drug user, users to start uh, smoking heroin instead of injecting. It's a little hard, but we're making big progress in this campaign. So it's very important to us to have these smoking foils 
so they can choose to smoke when they want to try to smoke instead of injecting. And from this year, we're handing out more uh, single um, smoking foils than um, needles. Just this year, it's past each other. And when we go to the riverside and backyards and so on, we don't find so many needles anymore. Uh, we find smoking foil. So the culture is changing. And where uh, naloxone treats a heroin overdose, this is prevention. So we had a rally up to the parliament and on our way up we were told in 2008 that we should not just go up to the parliament, we should be invited in as an interest group uh, like anyone else in our society. Jag vill önska er en hyggelig uppehåll här i Stortinget. Välkommen. When I grew up, uh, you drug, drug users, or those who used alternatives to alcohol, were treated like enemies of the society and were never seen as resources. It was just so unfair. Our society is much better than that on most areas. So we needed a drug policy reform. So today, so are a few Stortings representatives here who have come to hear what you have to say. Use your voice well, and your voice is like as much worth as absolutely all the others. We were in the debates and we were doing good. We are speaking, we are debating, we are writing. The Norwegian people really liked that. And that's why all these prizes, because people liked us when we went into the media, because we did a good job. Our strength in Norway is that we are, uh, what you call it, a diplomatic, we are pragmatic and we are tolerant for other people's views. We are not fighting each other, we are cooperating with each other. So we have got together and uh, made some serious impact on the drug policy reform and we are listened to, to by the politicians. If you are a drug user representative, you are an, an advisor to the leaders uh, working with them with mutual respect. Always mutual respect, that's, that's the key. We need to stop criminalizing vulnerable drug users. And if you use drugs, well, you might think about what you're doing. If you have problems with drugs, you don't need punishment, you need help. The biggest thing this last year is that when all drug user organizations agreed that we must stop criminalizing drug users, then the health minister answered us in the media and said, OK, when all of you oppose criminalization, then I must be for decriminalization of use and possession. And that is why we're now entering a drug policy reform in Norway based on the model of uh, Portugal. The response, however, will not have to be criminal, and we uh, propose that it should not be, uh, but instead uh, you should, as a person who uses drugs, have to meet for a municipal counseling unit. The Norwegian proposal aims to change the fundamental reactions of authorities to persons using drugs. It's an example of how states, at their own discretion, can adopt humane policy measures based on a public health-oriented approach. We welcome the approach taken by you in Norway. On behalf of our office, I welcome Norway's new proposal on the drug reform, which we recommend to move away from the punitive approach to supportive approach in addressing drug situation. Thank you very much. My name is Ari Knutsen, leader of the Association for Humane Drug Policy in Norway. I'm a drug user activist, and we wrote this petition that Ben Tøye told about. And after this, the civil society in general and the drug use organizations have been included in the work. And I remember, Mr. Hay, how we were standing outside the parliament with posters and banners and yelling at the government and the parliament, and we didn't go get nowhere. And when we were included, we have this cooperation. Now we are getting into an evidence-based and human rights-based politics. So uh, this is so just so fantastic. And Ben I thank you so much. Thank you so 
much, Al, and we have been discussing this for over 20 years. We have been disagreeing. You had right, I had wrong. <laughs> We need, so. really need to give people more help, we don't need to punish people. The civil society has been the driving force for this reform. I was against this uh, reform for like 20 years and have been in many, many discussions with the civil society. But they convinced me that this is uh, the way forward because they had the best argument and the best facts and all. If it wasn't for the HIV issue, we would still be considered as just uh, enemies of the society. We would still criminalize, we wouldn't help in any way unless you'd quit using drugs. If there wasn't for the drug user movement, you have, would have more, much more uh, forced treatment. We would not have uh, syringe programs to prevent HIV and hepatitis C. We would not have the drug consumption room in Norway. We would even not have the substitution program. In Norway, uh, we substitute uh, uh, heroin with methadone and uh, buprenorphine for 8,000 people. And then we got a science that was showing that this was much more effective, much more, uh, much better for the society. So now we're in the injection room that has turned into the drug consumption room and it has been open in Oslo since 2005. It's around 130 injections every day and uh, there was more than 1000 registered and uh, here they can inject in a safe uh, and hygienic uh, environment uh, so that no one has ever died in uh, overdose in the drug consumption room in the world ever. So this place, it saves very many lives. Now we have a, a very big syringe program. In, um, in Oslo, we hand out up to 5,000 syringes every day. And we have that all over the country. And we have 8,000 people in substitution treatment. From to next year, we will have a heroin prescription program. So we're turning heroin from deadly criminal narcotics until a legal life-saving medicine. We are suggesting and forming now a new model to see if we can substitute also amphetamine, cocaine and MDMA, the kind of addiction. We have still the open drug scenes. People are living in harshness. It's terrible. A lot of people are still dying, and uh, a lot of thousands, I guess, four, four to eight thousand in Oslo are living in very critical health conditions. All these uh, drug related deaths, we know we could be preventable. That's why we're fighting for a new drug policy. I really never suffered any of that, those negative consequences because I am who I am and I need respect like alcohol users, like tobacco users. I'm just feeling very lucky that I live in Norway and doing this and that, that, that don't live in Russia because no one would listen to me or respect me in any way or uh, so I wouldn't have no human rights. Norway is a unique democracy and uh, open society. So it's, it's, it's not just us drug users who have done a great job. It's a great society who has included us in all the processes and all the political development. We had great politicians and we had great individuals who has fought this fight for many years. We have great people in the media who has let us uh, express our views and treated us with respect. We are, have begun to cooperate much more with each other. We are in European network of people using drugs. We are in the international network of people using drugs. We use in social media to stay in contact with each other. 
we cooperate on big conferences and we we travel around the world meeting each other and that's quite new all the organization can commit to the international network of people using drugs that's the glue that uh, sticks us together